What's going on everybody? Today we are gonna go over what's been happening with set 9.5. So they just released the whole sneak peek for this. So I'm just gonna give my opinions on what's kind of going on and we get to see what's gonna be new in this set. So I heard there are a lot of item changes. They've been kind of teasing it throughout the week. I heard that Silco is back and I heard there are a couple of new traits. So let's just get right into it. So Bridgewater Excel item reworks and new region portals. Grab your snorkeling gear and let's dive in. Funny enough, I'm actually going snorkeling like right before the set. So that's gonna be fun too. So the convergence storm that reforged Runeterra has hit a warm front. Expect strong winds, humidity, and a whole lot of pirates. Arg. <laughs> In this article, I'm going to cover most of the new gameplay content, how you can use each piece on day one, September 13th, and of course, make a few jokes along the way. Let's set sail. First up, Bilgewater. So Bilgewater is going to be a 3579 trait. Uh, I'm glad that they're doing that. I'm not a fan of the 369. They did that with Ionia this set, and yeah, it's, <laughs> it's tough to get into six, you know? So since it's a 3579, I'm assuming, assuming that they're going to have buildable or craftable emblems for this. So probably one of those that exists right now going to get removed. And we're going to have Olawi as a Bastion, Graves, Gunner and Rogue, Twist of Fate, Multicaster, Nautilus, Juggernaut, Misfortune, Strategist, Nyla, Vanquisher, and Gangplank, Gunner and Reaver King. I wonder if Gangplank's going to have the buy ability back as we've seen before in the past and if they're removing Heimerdinger because of it. So Bilgewater champions apply a mark to enemies with their attacks and abilities. After a brief delay, cannon shots will strike marked enemies, dealing physical damage that increase with damage dealt to the marked target from Bilgewater units. As your crews expand, cannon shots will do more damage. Okay, so it's like, kind of like the Shurima thing, like one of the Shurima augments, pretty similar to that. So getting a group of nine pirates with conflicting interests, vendettas, or complicated romantic romances to work together can be tough, but believe me, it's even tougher when you need two Bilgewater emblems and level nine to do it. So yeah, they are going to be buildable. Uh, so if you aren't high rolling with Earth, Legend, or Poro, then you'll just have to look to run Bilgewater seven by swapping the deck with free booting Buccaneers until you get your hooks on okay these are a little too hard to read let's just look at the abilities but they are saying that the vertical comp lacks front line so we probably have to add someone else in so uh I, I saw that misfortune was a strategist so if jarvin's still in the game that'd probably be a good one they're also talking about juggernauts here but let's just check this out all right so we have twisted fade misfortune in the back where their ability is going to be shen's the main tank I don't really see too many wild abilities coming out, but there's like the pirate ship coming out. That's probably Gangplank, I have to be assuming. Uh, but I was trying to look at some of the other people. Let's let's take a look at the replay. What's Misfortune doing? Okay, so it's Make It Rain, Twisted Fate is just a blue card. All right, pretty decent stuff. I'm assuming Graves kind of probably have boring abilities because they're just one cost. Gangplank is a legendary unit that can be placed on the front line, igniting enemies to do true damage that scales with his AD. Or on the back line where he'll use his pistol to get quicker access to his ability. Oh, so he's kind of like an adaptive unit. So I've, I've read some of the teasers before. There are some units or there is an item where it changes based on whether you're in the front two rows or the back two rows. And they seem to want to do that with Gangplank also. But instead of being an item, it's just a champion. So there's a big pirate ship. And are they going to show him in the back row? Nope, not really. Oh, they are going to do it here. So he kind of just shoots with his pistol instead, and he's going to cast a little faster. All right, that's pretty cool. Adaptive units, I'm all for it. Uh, depending on the needs of your comp and items on hand, position the Reaver King in the front or back. AD maximizes his ability to kill frontline tanks. AP will make his cutlass a cut less, so you're better off backlining him for quicker access to his AP scaling spell. Reaver King isn't just the king of the pirates. He's a great add to any AD heavy comp in the late game, and his citrus in his dreadway distributes prior to... Exploding grants attack speed and cleanses allies. Who knew Citrus was highly combustible? I did not know that. So now <laughs> onto Ixtal. Two, three, four. Okay, so it's probably going to replace Freljord if I had to guess, but we will probably see a list of those at the end. Milio, tier one invoker, tier two, Kiana, Rogue, and Slayer. Nico, tier three. So Ixtal is going to be new. I, I didn't even know this trait, not trait, like this faction existed. Uh, and I don't really know too much about these champions, but 
Let's see what they do. So wait a minute. Are they getting rid of Noxus? It kind of seems like it. Uh, as you go deeper into Ixel breakpoints, you'll access more elemental hexes, but at the final trait breakpoint, you'll unlock a bonus effect for the hexes instead of a third hex. Elemental hexes will appear in the same position and host the same element for each player in the lobby. The element will be the same no matter how many hexes are active. As for hexes, we got a few different themes. So they have one which is stone at the start of combat. You gain immunity to crowd control for a couple seconds and you reduce damage and the bonus effect is empower champions heal 550 on takedown very nice the next one's going to be ice so the first time each empowered champion is reduced below 30 percent health they are encased by a protective ice becoming untargetable and healing for 30 percent of their max health over a couple seconds so it's kind of like azonia's in a way a bonus effect upon freezing adjacent enemies take 30% of their max health as magic damage. Next one's going to be this electric one. So the first time an enemy takes damage from each empowered champion's ability, they are stunned for two seconds. And then they could also stun once every six seconds when empowered. Next one is wood. They gain 10% max health. At the start of combat, they also gain 20 permanent max health as they grow in size. And then bonus effect at four X toll. Every four seconds, empowered champions gain 15 AP and AD. Fires, oh, there are a lot of them. Fire, <laughs> damage from an empowered champion's ability sets enemies on fire, dealing 45% of ability damage dealt as magic damage and burning them for 1% of their max health each second. And then bonus ability, fire deals 90% of AP and 2% burn instead. So lots of different effects here. You're going to kind of have to mix and match your team depending on what happens. So obviously, if you have... The fire one probably don't build a sunfire cape you know you probably have other options instead maybe just go full tank or something like that wind empowered champions gain 40 percent attack speed for four seconds at the start of combat whenever they use their ability bonus effect bonus attack speed stacks and lasts until the end of combat dev note excel changed heavily in our final week before pbe and we were not able to show wind additionally expect the specific numbers to change heavily for this trait as we continue testing it it's pretty experimental and very fun so we can't wait to see how you all play with it all right very nice vanquisher is next so vanquishers is a 246 they are the bane of frontliners okay so they could critically strike they have bonus crit chance and damage both of these values increase as you hit trait breakpoints and the real kicker is the bonus true damage vanquishers do against enemies with 1600 health or more okay so they have built-in giant slayer then uh, let's see who's making the vertical bruiser player cry in a corner. Jin is an Ionia and a Vanquisher, so I'm guessing they're getting rid of Deadeye. Ash, Freljord. Okay, so Freljord's staying. Darius, Juggernaut, and Slayer. Are they getting rid of Noxus? Really? Hmm. I guess it was kind of like a troublesome trait. They changed it a lot, so I guess just remove it, right? Nyla, Tier 4, Bilgewater, and then Zaya, Tier 4, Ionia. Ooh, Zaya's back into the game. Are they going to add Rakan? Normally they kind of do them together. You may notice some familiar faces who picked up a whole new skill set and lost one, Deadeye along the way. You may notice Aphelios didn't make it over to the Vanquishers. That's because our moody moon lad has embraced his love of guns and has been accepted by his gunner classmate. Just don't rub it in Jin's face. Okay, so uh, while, you're, while you'll be running two Vanquisher in vertical Ionia comps, adding an additional Vanquisher to Bilgewater comps or Noxus reroll comps can turn your enemy's front line into a flat line. Wait, but they don't show Darius as a, as a Noxus. Okay, maybe that's a typo or something. But okay, I guess Noxus are here to stay. Never mind. Uh, but let's see what they kind of do. So let's watch this one. Darius has got the classic build of BT Titans. Same with, who is that? Nyla? Okay. And then we have Ash in the back. Okay, I'm interested in seeing Xyla. Or I said Zyla, Zaya. I saw Nyla's ability pop up. Oh, it's like wild amount of feathers. Okay, pretty cool. A new four costs. Historically, we found most success with mid sets when we swap out a considerable number of our core four costs. So we're doing the same. Lux, Urgot, Zeri, Gwen, and Yasuo are out. I'm really sad that Gwen was never really that much of a thing. I mean, she's kind of a thing, but never really like the main four cost carry. So she unfortunately did not have a time to shine. In their place, we're getting Silco, Nyla, Zaya, and Mordekaiser. And the return of my favorite personal forecast, Fiora. Well, not mine, but the writers. <laughs> Let's meet our new favorite champs and hopefully yeah, hit, hitting three copies on seven. Yeah, come on, man. <sighs> Triggered. Silco is back. He's going to be a Zahn sorcerer. And power, real power, doesn't come to those who are born strongest, fastest, or smartest. It comes to those who just hit. That is very true. All right, let's see what Silco does. Let's 
Get a nice little watch on him. He's next to Jinx. That's a little creepy, but, you know, to each their own. So he throws his little glazy thing. All right. I'm assuming it just does, like, burn damage or something like that. Probably puts a debuff on people. If I had to guess, I know they're, like, trying to make armor penetration and magic penetration a little more accessible. It does seem like it would do something to that effect. He's good with melee comps to maximize the AoE of the Shimmer. Oh, so it buffs people. He greatly benefits from AP and making sorcerers a great trait for him. All right. I just realized his spell is over here. I just stopped reading because I didn't want to read too much flavor text. <laughs> his spell, Undercity Tactics, throws a vial at nearby enemies covering adjacent hexes and Shimmer for a few seconds. Enemies take damage each second while allies heal each second. Okay, Nyla, Bilgewater, and Vanquisher. Uh, let's see. Nyla's attack strike in a cone dealing AoE damage while her spell, Formless Blade, allows her to don a shield and dive to a safe location, gaining stacking attack speed. So they're saying since she's a melee carry, she's vulnerable to crowd control. So maybe Edge of Knight QSS might be useful for her. Uh, try to give Nyla a combination of defensive and offensive items, Bloodthirster being absolutely core to her survivability. Uh, Zaya, Ionia, and Vanquisher. Zaya is a strong, independent <laughs> Bastion who's taking some time away from Rakan to wing it on her own. Oh, wow. No Rakan. That's a little sad. Wasn't Rakan also missing in a recent set that Zaya was in? Or am I thinking crazy talk? Maybe I'm thinking crazy talk. But she throws out her feathers and then calls them behind her target that converge ripping through enemies to deal physical damage and reduces armor. Let's see how she does it. Okay, she's about to cast. Kaboom. And then, okay, it doesn't bring it back, though. Okay, still pretty cool. Still pretty cool. I wonder what build you want on her. They have Deathblade, i.e. Rageblade. Probably makes, a, makes sense to do that. Um, but yeah, she's a backliner with built-in armor reduction. She just needs to get casting to pull it off. Uh, combo of 80 and attack speed items obviously are going to be good. Mordekaiser is the next one. Noxus and Slayer. So Mordekaiser hits hard with his attacks that scale with AP. He hits even harder when his spell is active, granting him a shield and one hex more of range for moderate duration. During this time, if he kills an enemy, he'll steal AD, AP, armor, MR, and health from that enemy for the rest of combat. Okay. So he's kind of like, that sounds like Nasus, right? Nasus, but a little bit different. He needs to kill someone to do it. Nasus, I believe he just takes stats from people after he casts. So he just gets super beefy reset champion. I wonder how you kind of build that team. Is Mordekaiser even a Noxus? I thought he was a different one. I thought he was like Shadow Isle or something like that with like Hecarim or something. But okay, I must, I'm, I'm not the most well-versed in League of Legends lore. Okay, so next one is Fiora, Demacia, and Challenger. Is she going to be a clone of before? She's graduated from the Academy of Fencing and is here to bring honor to the Laurent family by defeating any Challenger in her way. Her ability, Blade Waltz, makes her untargetable as she strikes her target's vitals. Each strike deals physical damage scaling with AD and deals bonus true damage scaling with AP. This is very similar to her Academy trait from before, or like when she was in a previous set. She also heals for a small portion of the damage dealt, and if her target dies, which they will, she'll change targets to nearest enemy. So, great build on her already. I was already thinking the same items. Titans and Hand of Justice, it gives both AD and AP, so it's kind of like a no-brainer to put it on her. And yeah, she's dashing around, hitting their vitals. <sighs> kind of dodging a lot of the hits, healing up a little bit. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Kind of like the reprint from before. As a melee carry with great scaling and survivability tools, powerful items will allow Fiora to turn your arena into a podium. Radiant items from her Demacia trait definitely fit the bill. Jarvan and Sona are great adds to buy Fiora time to dish out the damage and crowd control. Well, yeah, no kidding. Jarvan's good in every comp, you know? All right. Past Demacia 3, look to add a few challengers to your comp, but don't get too hung up on Fiora's traits here. Adding utility champs like Shen, even Silco, bring ton of synergy to running Fiora as her primary carry. I'm assuming since she doesn't really need attack speed, because she seems like she's more of a spellcaster, you might not need the challenger trait that much, kind of like how Yasuo is. So first timers, Milio and Nefari. So this is going to be the first time they're in TFT. As a one cost, Milio is a great holder for AP items and a useful source of CC in the late game when you still want to use the elemental hexes from Ixtal. Milio and his trait also just give about any low cost reroll comp a good kick by allowing you to empower the one cost carry with the elements of Ixtal. But the real queen of the comp is Nefari, Challenger, Darken, and Shurima, who will lead the pack on her own reroll comp. I've dubbed it Who Let the Dogs Out. What cost is Nefari again? Uh, but Nafari is going to be Challenger, Darken, and Shurima. Is Darken the new trait? Let's check them out right now. 
oh, there's like the little wolf little legend and like the, I've seen the pig with a knife before. That one's kind of funny. All right, Nefari kind of just does a bunch of damage, I'm guessing. And then where's, where's Milio? I don't see Milio here. Okay, let's move on into the next one. So slow rolling at six, so Nefari's probably at two costs. Uh, Nefari Warwick could potentially be a comp. And then later on, you add in Nasus or Fioro to complement them. Okay, that could be good. That could be good. Uh, we have to kind of see what all the champions are before we, like, do all these things. But I, I'll try to make, like, a PBE comp list. It's not going to be a tier list because they make changes every day. But it's just, like, comps to try. And I'll try to do that sometime soon. Oh, I just realized Aatrox is also a Darken, right? So once you've three-starred Nefari, keep maintaining Econ because now you need to power level to find Aatrox. Okay, that's going to be the most giga high roll comp ever. Holy cow. Okay, so now we're on to region portals, Bilgewater. So travel to Bilgewater, do blah, blah, blah. Let's see what we can get with the local five finger discount. Finn's market, round three, seven is replaced by a visit to Bilgewater trader Finn, who will stock either completed artifact support or radiant items, and you can choose one to keep for free. So it's kind of just like, I'm assuming it's like an armory of just like a bunch of stuff you could kind of pick from and everyone gets kind of the same thing. At the slaughter docks, you'll gain free shop rerolls equal to the stage number plus one at the start of each stage. These last only for the round you get them, so start up your units and polish off those comps. Ooh, that one's actually kind of cool, so it kind of forces you to roll. Rat Town is nicer than the name suggests, but not by much. Starting in stage two, lucky shops can now appear randomly at the start of the round once per stage. These shops feature units tailored to your army's active traits. There's no discount here, but you'll save a heck of a lot in rerolls. Rise, Realm War, Bilgewater. Traveling to a new region means there's an all new Rise spell in Bilgewater. Rise creates a portal summoning a giant treasure chest to fall from the sky on the largest cluster of enemies, dealing magic damage to enemies within two hexes. The size of this chest is increased by the gold you have, so save up to make your foes dead broke. Each enemy hit has a chance to drop loot and a chance to drop gold. So when the ability kills a foe, the chance is higher because in Bilgewater, that just makes sense. Okay, yeah, it, it does make a lot of sense. Rise on the pirate map probably should get you some extra loot, right? Nothing crazy there. Now onto Excel Serpentine River. Get those chatting fingers ready for this one. Instead of carousel rounds, vote for what bonus the lobby should get. Get a component anvil after each voting round. Oh, so instead of the carousel, it's just the whole like voting thing at the start again. Okay, that's a little odd, but okay, we'll see how that works out. Okay, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. With this portal, everyone loves a reroll player. Every time players start up 20 units, all players gain increasingly valuable loot. Whoa. Okay, so that one's, this is an interesting concept. I like this, they're trying something new. That one's good. Cardinal Arcology, with so much variance in TFT, we've seen a desire for simple portals and prismatic augments. Uh, so instead of adding another wild Excel experiment, we're giving more of what players seem to love with Cardinal Arcology, which will always offer a prismatic gold and silver augment. So, it, okay, that's a lot of predictability then. Rise, Realm Warp, and Ixtal. In Ixtal, Rise covered up to the ground with, uh, let's start this from the start, with a thicket of vines around his current target. After a brief delay, he'll deal magic damage to enemies within and knock up enemies in the epicenter of the entanglement. Allies that are wrapped in vines will gain armor and magic resist for a short duration. So it's kind of like a very supportive one. Okay, so you probably just want uh, him to cast really quickly on that one. Uh, region portal is Freljord, so we've got one more region portal that we'll share to highlight with our new item rework, Valar's Hollow. In Valar's Hollow, you'll gain an item anvil on 2-3 and a support item on 3-3. Just what is a support anvil? Read on to find out. Okay. I mean, okay, it is right here. <laughs> so I've heard the rumors already. So items are going to be changed a bit. They're going to be different categories of items. So there's going to be the normal items, but there's also going to be now support items, uh, artifact items, which include Orn items and Shimmer Scale items, like all those like weird ones like that. And then obviously the Radiant items. They have six new items, adjusting three items and adding the support things. Uh, why change the items? Items are an important way to power up champions in TFT. One of the most satisfying experiences is getting the perfect components to finalize your carry's build. On the flip side, uh, we get more docked. Okay, yeah. <laughs> One of the big obstacles for these are the more supportive items like Zephyr and Zeke's Herald. While these items are incredibly powerful later in the game, they're not that attractive on stage two or three. It didn't always used to be that way. I remember in set one, I'm gonna use this example a lot. If you guys have been listening to me for years, I probably say this once a year. 
uh, in Challenger, in set one, there's this person, I don't remember their name, but the powerful items during set one were Guardian Angel and Morello Namicon. So those are the components of belt, rod, chain, and sword. But this guy would only build support items. He would build Locket and Zeke's Herald every single game. And he would just top four every single game because those items, in set one at least, were very powerful at the start of the game. And you just get free top fours by playing it. But the game kind of evolved and they're now like much better as support later on. But uh, just a little history lesson, I guess. But here's their goals. They want to make itemizations easier to understand and give each class of champions a variety of viable items to build that offer broad range of stats. So, okay. Core items are just the regular items, radiant items, upgraded version of core items, artifact items. So they're just orn items. They're like uncraftable items that are kind of neat. And then now the new support items. So all the old items such as shroud, locket and stuff will be there still. It's a little cringe, but you know, you kind of need them. And then all support items stat wise will just have 250 health and will be much more powerful than their core item versions. We're also taking this time to make it so that Shroud of Stillness and Zephyr can no longer be equipped during combat. Okay, that is actually pretty big because you used to be able to cheese Shroud and Zephyr a ton, not anymore. More item options from new classes. So Adaptive Helm is going to be a new item that's going to be built from Tyr and Negatron Cloak. It gives mana, MR, and at the start of combat, the holder gains bonus stats based on their starting position. So, oh, this is Adaptive Helm. 15 AP and 25 armor and MR in the front two rows, and then 15 AP and 15 mana every second in the back two rows. So it's definitely a flex item. You probably just play it in any random comp that uses AP people, and if you really need a frontline item, you use it on the frontliner. If you need it on the backliner, use it on the backliner. I'm gonna assume the overall power level is gonna be weaker compared to the regular item counterparts. So for example, Rabadon's Death Cap probably has to be a better damage item than Adaptive Helm, right? Uh, but Warmogs has to be a better tank item than Adaptive Helm, right? But it makes sense because this one you could change based on what kind of happens. So that's kind of cool. Nasher's Tooth, this is gonna be from Bow and Belt. AP, attack speed, and health. After casting a spell, gain 40% attack speed for five seconds. This is Azir Nation, holy cow. So, Nasher's Tooth is an interesting item that has many use cases. Best for champions that can take full advantage of the enhanced attack speed time window. Nasher's Tooth will be an item which has varying effectiveness. It's best paired with other mana regeneration sources that can keep refreshing the attack speed buff. Are we gonna see like Nasher's Rageblade builds or is that too much attack speed? That one would be kind of interesting to see. Even Shroud, Negatron Cloak, and Giant Spelt, 150 health, 20 MR, and this is a Sunder effect, so it's a pure tank item that gives like Sundering. That's pretty cool. I always wondered why uh, Magic Penetration had two options. They had Ionic Spark and Static Shiv, but then Armor Penetration, they only had uh, Last Whisper, so now they get their defensive counterpart, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Crown Guards, the next one, Needlessly Large Rod and Chain Vest, AP and Armor. Gain a shield at the start of combat equal to 35% of your maximum health for 8 seconds. When the shield breaks or expires, gain 40 ability power. Okay, so it isn't just a featured item that Chonk stole from Gangplank in our mid-set art. Uh, it's also a great item for AP frontliners with large health pools or AP carries who are getting bursted down before they can ramp up. Crown Guard works well on champions like Nico and Mordekaiser. Okay, so yeah, all the melee casters. Like, remember Fiddlesticks Legendary from before? It'd probably be incredible with this. Um, any AP frontliner is probably their dream item, right? Steric's Gauge is going to be from BF Sword and Giant's Belt. Health and AD, once per combat at 50% health, increase max health by 25% and gain 30% AD for the rest of combat. Darius is just begging to get his hands on this one. Oh, yeah, that is true. Yeah, it's pretty much Bloodthirster, but you get AD, but you don't get any healing. So it's probably pretty decent on him. Night Harvester is from Gloves and Chain Vest. 25 AP, 25 Armor, and Crit Chance. Uh, deal 15% bonus damage, increased by 15% when target is below 60% max health. This would work really well with uh, Deathfire's Grasp. That would, they would kind of synergize together, because DFG would kind of get them low, and then you get even more increased damage. High risk meets high reward. Night Harvester is Jewel Gauntlet's best friend, as it provides both AP and Crit Strike Chance. That's true, too. This item works best when the wearer can survive a bit. If only Gwen could stay for mid-set, she'd love this one. Okay, that's on you, Riot Games. That's not on us, you know? 
<laughs> the items will be replacing Zizirot, Zephyr, Shroud of Stillness, Zeke's Herald, Chalice of Harmony, and Lockets of Iron Solari as craftable items, but those will still be around via support items. It's worth noting that each of these new items also has a Radiant version, but some items you'll just need to see for yourself. Finally, we're moving around some of the Shimmer Scale items into Artifact items and adding a few new support items. We're incredibly excited to see what we see, blah, blah, blah. Horizon Focus is our final mid set that goes live on September 13th for most regions. We're thrilled to be able to deliver, okay, blah, blah, blah. Also, I think the uh, PBE will come out, I think on Wednesday. Sometimes they do it on Tuesday, sometimes they do it on Wednesday. Today is Monday, the day we're posting this, so we'll definitely have to look out for that. Just to finish up and get a more comprehensive list of the changes I've been going on to another website, they're adding a couple new little legends, Knife Puff, Knight Found, Light Charger, River Spirit, and Aurelia, like all different versions of them. Oh, okay, it's cheap. new Chibi's gonna be Aurelia. There are some teasers on that before. Three new arenas, Bilgewater Bay, Sailing in Runeterra. Oh, do they have skins now for for maps i didn't i don't think they had that before wait no they did have that before uh space battle wait this one's kind of the same one maybe the, the only new one's bilgewater bay uh and then are we missing anything i'm trying to see if we're missing anything it doesn't seem like we are are there going to be new what do you call it new augments or new legends that's what i'm trying to look at okay so we could see <laughs> did they really put the rip symbol over people so malachi's gone tristanic's gone viego's gone uh, Kled's gone, Timo, Zed is gone. So it looks like they're removing Shadow Isles and Yordles, Akshan, Garen, Callista, Lissandra. Who's the new Freljord? The Freljords are only going to be Ash and Sejuani, so that's pretty odd to see. They're kind of changing that trait a lot. Uh, by the Gwen, Lux, Urgot, Yasuo, and Zeri. And then the last one, oh, they are keeping Heimerdinger. So Heimerdinger is only pilt over in Techno Genius now, no longer a Yordle. Uh, anyone else that's interesting to kind of see? They're removing Senna because she was a Shadow Owl. Uh, I don't think they're, oh, remove traits and augments. So, oh, it's just the crowns and stuff like that. And they're removing all that shimmers. Okay. That's kind of all we have to see, I guess. I don't really think there's anything else. Oh, by the way, the support items are denoted by this little gray icon at the bottom right. Um, but that's going to be it, I guess. Here are some of the new augments. It's just the crowns and the chests and the hearts. Uh, Rising Infamy, Round Star, get a level 1 treasure chest. Your cannon barrages permanently improve future chests. Gain 3 Bilgewater units. Okay, so that's the one that's like kind of the trait specific one. They have the plus one where you get a level 2 treasure chest. Same thing. Level 3, same thing. Stationary support, gain a training dummy in 8-player combats. Equip the dummy with one random support item, which cannot be removed. Gold is the same thing, but you get... Gold is the same thing, but you get it right away. Uh, prismatic, gain a training dummy as 3 support items equipped, which can... Okay, that one sounds pretty good. Teaming ups making a return, gain one random support item and one gold. Same thing here, and then same thing here, but just like a little bit more stuff. Stolen Vitality, when your Vanquishers attacks critically strike, they heal their lowest health ally for 2% of their target's max health, gain 2 Vanquisher units. Support Cache, uh, open an armory and choose one of 5 support items, makes sense. Uh, rejuvenating Flames, allies heal for 7% of their max health every 5 seconds, increased by 3% for each Ixtal ally that's started combat on an elemental hex, and you gain 2 Ixtal units. Okay, so overall, I'm glad that they didn't remove too many champions that I like. The only one that I would have liked to see a little more action is maybe Viego. There are some RFC Viego builds that just never came to light. No one ever re-rolled Viego in the previous set, so that one is a little sad. And I think he actually did have a lot of potential. You know, like, you're never going to re-roll Orianna for 3-star Orianna. That's never going to happen. But Viego definitely was possible. And uh, I think the rest of them, some of the forecasts, uh, I'm, I don't think I'm too sad about them going. Let's see the list of the stuff that they removed. Lux, Urgot, Zeri, Gwen, and Yasuo. Yeah, I'm not going to really miss them too much. None of them are really like that, that, that different. Um, and the ones we got in return do seem pretty cool. But let me know your thoughts on the changes. What units would you have liked to see instead of them based on the traits that they have? Um, obviously, Silco is going to be cool. I'm trying to think of other ones that really stood out. A uh, Mordekaiser would be cool with some of the new items, I would think. And maybe the Nefari plus Aatrox Giga High Roll combo because you're re-rolling and you're trying to play a Legendary. That one's going to be very oppressive, I feel. But <laughs> we'll kind of just have to see. I will be streaming when it comes out. I believe it comes out either tomorrow or the day after. 
So definitely look out for that. I'll probably be doing it every day for the first week of the PBE. And then hopefully once the set starts, I'll be playing a lot too. But that is going to be it for me today. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.